and I was packing my mother up to go join him. And the day I put her on the ship, that day, I walked up down New York and I found autobiography of, autobiography of a yogi. I tell you, it was, I, if my parents had been there, I who knew absolutely nothing about these teachings, I don't know if I'd have had the strength of will to tell them I'm going out to do this thing, which they would have thought completely crazy, but they were powerless. They were, mother was on a ship, dad was over there, we didn't have airplane travel in those days. Well, there were some, but not, not enough for, for that. And uh, this was 1948. And I read this, I got this book and I read it between tears of joy and tears of love. It was the most moving experience of my life. I really took virtually the next bus across the country. I had never thought that I would ever do this. I was an ordinary, arrogant young man. I never dreamed that I would say this to him, but I went four days and four nights across the country by bus. I went to Yogananda. He had just finished lecturing in Hollywood Church. The first words I addressed to him were, I want to be your disciple. I have never regretted those words in these 61 years. It was the moving, the pivotal point of my life. And I have, when you're on to a good thing, I say hang on to it. <laughs> I knew I had found the, the, you know, I have to say this too, that here I had a normal Western education and on page eight of Autobiography of a Yogi, I think it's page eight, Larry Marsha is materializing in a wheat field. <laughs> I tell you, there were many things I had to put on a shelf. <laughs> but what convinced me about him was himself. I had never, in the pages of a book, encountered so much greatness, so much humility, so much love so much compassion and so much bliss. And I had been willing to give up everything and go and live in a jungle if I, just thinking I might somehow, with uh, time, effort, and luck, find a little peace of mind. And he, in his book, he talked about the joy of God. In fact, he showed us and taught the nature of God is Satchidananda ever existing, ever conscious, ever new bliss. Everything has come out of that bliss. Sometimes people say, well, why did God create the universe? Sri Yukteswar, my guru's guru, said that, that uh, we have to leave a few questions to be answered in the divine. But I think I have an answer to that. It's the nature of bliss to want to express itself. And the more I have of this bliss, which sometimes I can hardly stand, the more I feel I want to share, I'd love to just, if every, anybody wants to shoot me for doing it, who cares? I don't mind at all. <laughs> because there's only one thing in life. And the reason that I, I have found for loving everybody is not what that man told Yogananda in Autobiography of a Yogi, the leveling uh, unity of egoic principle that you have to take for granted but the fact that everybody in the world is seeking that bliss. That's the reason for loving everybody. It's, they may be mafiosi, they may be criminals, they may be drunks, they may be all kinds of people, but the reason they do what they do is that they want happiness and they don't know how to find it. And this was Yogananda's great manifesto before he came to America. He said, everybody in the world is trying to find two things. One, how to avoid pain and suffering. As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, oh Arjuna, get away from this, from my ocean of suffering and misery. And people look around, they have good cars, they have houses, they have a job. What do you mean suffering and misery? But it's there. It's always waiting around the next corner. You 
can't get away from it because everything in this world is based on duality. For every up, there has to be a down. When spirit created the universe, spirit was without an emotion. And to create it, he had to create vibration. And vibration means movement in opposite directions. And so everything in this universe is based on that vibration. And in human life, what it means is that every success must be followed by a failure. Every fulfillment must be followed by a disappointment. Every pain that people find, that people endure, has to be followed by a joy. But it's always up and down. And the soul reaches the point where finally it says, I've had enough. I've worked all these lives, all these lives, trying to find a fulfillment, thinking I'll find it in this thing, you know, that person, this place, whatever it be. And I haven't found it yet. You know, the sum total of all human effort is and cannot but be zero.